I want to read the first four verses of Psalm 91. It says there, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He, ha he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. <clears throat> his trust shall be thy shield and buckler. Now this psalm is uh, known to most Christians because it has been uh, cited and uh, prayed also many times during the pandemic. It's a beautiful and powerful psalm. Uh, it has no title, uh, however and it's unclear who wrote it. Now it has much similarities with the preceding um, psalm, Psalm 90, as well as even with the Song of Solomon that we can find in Deuteronomy 32. And therefore many think it was written by Moses. But then it also borrows phrases from Psalms 27 and 31, and so others think it's written by David. In any case, it's a wonderful psalm. And um, interestingly enough, the first two verses uh, use four wonderful titles of God. It speaks about the Most High, which is Elion in Hebrew. It speaks about the Almighty, which is Shaddai. And then it speaks about the Lord, Yahweh, and my God which is Elohai. Elohai is the singular form of uh, Elohim that most of us know, among other places, from Genesis 1 verse 1, of course. One of the names of God is El Elyon, God the Most High, which is in Scripture usually translated with Most High. What does it exactly point to? Um, to find out, we go back to the first time that this uh, title is used in Scripture, and that is in Genesis chapter 14, verse 18. There it says the following, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God, El Elyon. So this regards Melchizedek the timeless king and priest who served bread and wine to Abram. And uh, actually, he, he did it on the exact same spot and on the exact same date as Jesus would do it um, many centuries later. We saw in our book of, um, in our study of the book of Hebrews, that this Melchizedek is actually a theophany of the revelation of Yeshua, of Jesus. Um, so I will leave the link to that video and also the video Self Same Day, which speaks also about this. So um, if you're interested, you can find out more about that. So, but the, that also shows that this word Elion points actually to Jesus. The word Elion in Hebrew comes from the root Elah. And we've also spoken about that word in previous videos. Ela means to ascend, to ascend. For example, there is a special offering called Ola offering, uh, which is a burnt offering that, uh, of which the smoke ascends to heaven. And that's why it's called Ola offering. And of course, we all know the word Aliyah, yeah, when uh, Jewish people um, return to the land of Israel. It's called Aliyah, which is based on the same root. It means going up to the land of Israel, going up to Jerusalem. And that's really a type of the rapture, actually. As I pointed out uh, before, um, 
it's going up or ascending to the new Jerusalem, to the place where God resides, the mountain where he is on high. Elion expresses the truth that the Lord is resurrected and ascended to heaven. It's really actually the name of the Lord God, Yeshua, Jesus. And it then says that God, Yeshua, has a secret place. Now that's not a new concept. We read it in other Psalms as well. For example, Psalm 27 verse 5, there it says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. So we have here this secret place where God shall shelter, um, shelter us in the time of trouble. And the rock, of course, refers to, directly to Jesus. And in Psalm 31, verse 20, we read again, Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. That secret place is a place to live in, to dwell, to abide. And those who do abide in the shadow of the Almighty, Psalm 91 says, being protected and taken care of. It is an ascended place of rest, being lifted up above the madness of this fallen world. It's a high place of safety. It's very much like an eagle's nest that is way up high, safe to dwell. The word for dwelling has the idea of lodging or sleeping, very much like you would do in a, um, in a hotel or a shelter. You, you lodge there. Um, but it has with it the meaning of sleeping and waking up. The idea of... Um, death and resurrection actually and it is dwelling in the resurrection life of jesus yeshua being dead to the world and that is actually how paul um, words it in colossians 3 verse 3 he says for you are dead and your life is hid with christ in god we know this verse but um, if you think about it it's actually quite deep and it is saying basically the same as Psalm 91, dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, Elion. It means literally what Paul writes, being hidden in Christ. Now the Lord God is called Shaddai, Almighty, El Shaddai, God Almighty. And it is in His shadow that we may dwell. It's like uh, under the wings of a powerful eagle. Actually, that's exactly what it says in verse 4. Um, the shadow of Shaddai, it speaks of. Tzal Shaddai. And it means being under the protection of God's presence. Being overshadowed by His glory and His presence. He is the Almighty Shaddai. There is no greater power. Almighty is a very uh, beautiful word if you think of it. Because it means more mighty than anything or anyone else, almighty. Um, and that is God, there is no greater power. In Greek we call it Pantocrator, almighty. So let's talk some more about that secret place. It is a place that can only be entered through a secret door. And it's not far away. In fact, it's right here. Yet, it is totally hidden to the world. And we know that secret door. We can read about it in John 10, verse 7, second half. There, Jesus himself says, I am the door of the sheep. And in verse 9, he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. At any moment we can go in and out. We can experience God's divine presence and come boldly before the throne of grace. By having the privilege to know the door to God's secret place, we may behold God's hidden glory 
at any time. And it's secret and it's hidden because that's what it is for the world. The world knows nothing of this realm. The world is limited or uh, even uh, enslaved um, by the appearances and the illusions, and I might add the delusions, of this worldly realm. Jesus' disciples asked Jesus about this and he said to them in Matthew 13 verse 11, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. And some may say that's unfair, because if only the others could see, then they would believe. Um, but Jesus also said, uh, you will not get a sign if that's what you long for. You have to believe first, then you will see. Yet there are also many followers of Jesus Christ who know very little of the secret place of the Most High or what it is to abide under his shadow. Many think it is too mystical and it's more poetic language. And although all the children of God are invited into the holiest of holy and to look upon the mercy seat, the mercy seat which is actually a type of Jesus, we spoke about this of course multiple times as well, but mercy seat is called uh, also the propitiation, uh, which comes from the Greek word uh, elastirion, um, which is used in both in the New Testament for propitiation and for Jesus, and it's used in the Old Testament, uh, the Greek Old Testament, for uh, the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. We are invited to look upon it. That's the place of atonement. That's the place where the blood is shed. And uh, in spite of this invitation, very few actually dwell there. And it's not a matter of uh, running in and out every now and then, which some may do at best. But uh, it's a matter of habitually dwelling there, residing there. The psalm says, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The word abide means to continue, to continue there. It's not occasional. And in order to be under his shadow, um, you have to be very close to him in order for his shadow to fall on you. Uh, if you ever try to find the shade of a tree on a hot summer day, then uh, it's not enough to look at the tree from a distance. You have to actually approach it and go under it, be very close to it. And that is the intimacy to which Jesus invites us. It's an intimate, close relationship, not occasional, but continual. And uh, it's um, very beautifully worded in Song of Solomon. And we spoke about these words also in a uh, video some years ago called The Rose of Sharon. I will leave the link to that as well. But it says there in uh, chapter 2 verse 3, As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste. It's poetic, it's even romantic, but it breathes this intimacy to be close to him. This is the delight, the great delight that we uh, are privileged to enjoy, um, to taste from the fruit and to be under his shadow. Psalm 91 verse 2 then says, He is my refuge and my fortress. Now, if you uh, live intimately close with God, you will enjoy the greatness of his protection. You know to flee to him and to shelter under his shadow. It's not only a place of delight, but it is also a place of shelter, of safety. And whether it are the attacks of the devil, whether it's disaster or disease, the psalmist says, my God, my God, in him will I trust. To say, my God, is a big thing. Many say it. Uh, you see in messages in, uh, um, on social media or whatnot, you see always this abbreviation, OMG. Oh my God. And people don't know what they are actually saying. To call God, my God, is a big thing. And we have to ask ourselves, as believers, is he really my God? Is God your God? Do you fully trust him? 
That also means to unconditionally obey him. You cannot have a close relationship with God without that. Jesus says in John 14, verse 23, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. You see here the, the dynamic. Man loves God. Man obeys God. Keep my words. God loves man. And then he says, we will come and make our abode with him. We is El Elyon and El Shaddai. God the Son and God the Father. That's what he's speaking about here. We'll, and, and he says, we will make our abode with him. That's a continuous, continuous um, indwelling. It's very intimate. So the secret place may be far for those who do not know him, but it is within reach of everyone who wants. And those who dwell there can go in and out freely and abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. The security the psalm speaks about can be obtained only on the account of our Lord Yeshua, Jesus, the Most High, El Elyon, the resurrected and ascended Lord. That's basically the, the condition here for the rest of the psalm. That's what it begins with. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. That's what it begins with. And everything else applies to that person, that person who has this intimate relationship with Jesus. Jesus is the bridge between earth and heaven, and only through him we have access to the Almighty, so that we can dwell under his shadow. He, Jesus, is the ascended Lord, Elah, El Elyon. Um, in Proverbs, the question is posed, who, who is this? Um, in uh, Proverbs 30, verse 4, it says, who has ascended, Elah, up into heaven, or descended, who hath gathered the winds in his fist, who hath bound the waters in a garment, who hath established all the ends of the earth, what is his name, and what is the name of his son, if you can tell. And Psalm 24 asks the same question and answers it, Psalm 24 verse 3. Who shall ascend Elah, into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? Who is the King of glory, the Lord of hosts? He is the King of glory. That was verse 3 and verse 10. He is the King of glory, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And then Jesus himself confirms it in John chapter 3, verse 13. Very interesting verse. He says, And no man hath ascended, Elah, up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Think about this. He mentions three things. The one who ascended to heaven, past tense. The one that came down from heaven, past tense. And the one who is in heaven, present tense. And he is saying it himself while he is on earth. Um, so uh, this is not the, his ascension that he speaks about that would come later. He is speaking about the fact that he has ascended to heaven way before, actually before the foundations of the earth. And he came from heaven like the manna that came from heaven, the bread of life. And even though he's son of man, he is still son of God. He is in heaven. So to be protected from the snare of the fowler, from the pestilence, from the deadly arrows, from destruction and evil, it's not a matter of just praying this psalm as so many people have done in the past years. But okay, it's good to pray the psalm 
it's always good to to cite scriptures, but uh, it's not a magic spell. It's not a matter of saying you know, praying the psalm and then you're good to go. No, it's not magic. What is um, what is all uh, all about above everything else is doing what the psalm says, and that is to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. In other words to have that intimate relationship with Jesus. Otherwise, it's just words. Seek Jesus. Have that intimate, close relationship with him to enjoy both the, uh, the delight of being with him as well as the protection that he provides. Um, it's all about Jesus. He is the way, the truth and the life. Blessed be his name. Amen.